something extraordinary that's happening in New York City this month. Now, you may have remembered uh, earlier this year, there was all kinds of buzz about an arch, an arch that stood at the entrance to the Temple of Baal. It was going to be reconstructed, and it was going to put up, be put up in Times Square in New York City and in Trafalgar Square in London. And, but the time came, and it came uh, closer to, to when that was going to happen. And the project for New York City was canceled at that time. And the, the project for Trafalgar Square was switched to a different arch, which we'll talk about. Uh, and so the arch in, in uh, Trafalgar Square in London was unveiled. It, it was put up, and, and it went forth. But the, the, the project for New York City was uh, put off until now. And uh, we just learned the, the organization behind this is called the Institute for Digital Archaeology. And uh, they've got a big announcement on their website. In fact, if you go to their official website, you'll see there's a big public letter announcing that uh, an arch will be put up in Manhattan, in New York City, on September 19th. Now, this arch, it's not going to be the arch that stood directly uh, in front of the Temple of Baal, that was literally the entrance to the Temple of Baal, but rather it will be an arch that was just uh, nearby. It's called the Arch of Triumph, also known as the Monumental Arch. And this arch was built after the Temple of Baal. It was built by the Romans. It was built uh, by the Romans to commemorate a great military victory. But this arch, if you look at a map of the complex of the ruins, it connected the main colonnade, kind of the main street, to the Temple of Baal. So people who wanted to go from kind of the main drag, the main street, where kind of everything was going on, and wanted to go over and worship at the Temple of Baal, they would have to go through uh, this particular arch. So, so it, it's, it's still very nearby and uh, very significant um, and still has a connection to the Temple of Baal, which we'll talk about. But it was constructed by the, the Romans to commemorate a victory over the Parthians. And the Parthians, if you read uh, Stephen M. Collins' book on Parthia, extraordinary work. I've, I've read the book actually two times because it was so good. But in that book, Stephen M. Collins shows that the Parthians have, were uh, heavily made up of people that uh, were originally from people groups from the northern tribes of Israel. And so really that arch that the Romans put up commemorated a victory over the tribes of Israel. And so that's kind of disturbing. But perhaps even more disturbing is the, the connection to the Temple of Baal that, uh, that this arch represents, because it is a pagan arch. The Romans uh, commemorated it and, and, and celebrated their, their, their pagan gods when they put it up. But like I said, uh, if you wanted to go from the, the main colonnade of, of the, the ruins there, of the complex there, and, and you wanted to go over to the Temple of Baal, you had to go through this arch. And so, uh, you know, and, and so, well, people say, well, what is the significance of Baal? Well, Baal was the primary God that led Israel astray in ancient times. God got very, very upset because the people of Israel abandoned him, and they went and served Baal and other gods and goddesses and Ashtoreth, which is the, a female deity. But Baal, in one of the, the, the main aspects of the worship of Baal was child sacrifice. And uh, you know what they would do? They would actually uh, sacrifice uh, live children, babies, to Baal um, um, to, to please their God. But, uh, and so if you had a, a son or a daughter that, you, that had been born that you didn't want, that you wanted to get rid of, you would just wait for the next... Uh, next sacrifice, the next, uh, you know, offering to Baal. Um, and, uh, but, you know, today, you know, we look back on that and say, oh, isn't that horrible? But today, you know, are we really that much different in that we've killed far more of our own sons and daughters than they ever did in the ancient world. In fact, since Roe versus Wade was decided in 1973, more than 58 million babies had been killed in the United States. And now um, another aspect of, of, of Baal worship 
was while these sacrifices were going on, there would often be huge sexual orgies surrounding the Temple of Baal. And people gather around to watch. And people might think, oh, that, those ancient people, they were so disgusting, so evil. Well, you know, the truth is that uh, in so many ways today, we're very, very similar. Now, I just did an article on the most important news.com about Burning Man. And every year what happens um, is that people literally now from all over the world, this has been going on now for 30 years. It's the 30 year anniversary started in 1986. People from all over the world converge on a corner of the, of the Nevada desert and uh, the Black Rock Desert and, and they create this temporary city, it's this community. And so this year there's gonna be about 70,000 people from all over the world drawn to this uh, really bleak stretch of the Nevada desert. And it's kind of a mixture of Mad Max meets Woodstock meets Eyes Wide Shut, where it's basically a celebration of everything bizarre, everything weird, uh, you know, celebration of hedonism. So you've got, you know, occultists, wizards, sorcerers, witches, uh, new age gurus. You've got tattoo piercists. You've got, uh, you know, people dressed up in all kinds of bizarre costumes. Now, the U.S. State Department is demanding North Korea allow independent inspections of the regime's political prison camps for a better understanding of the human rights abuses taking place within them. The US-based Voice of America reported Monday that State Department spokeswoman Katina Adams said conditions at the prison camps are life-threatening, especially for children and pregnant women. She added that women are exposed to sexual violence and forced abortions calling for independent research institutes such as the International Committee of the Red Cross to look into the conditions inside the camps, experts estimate.